Also breaking tonight in a news statement, Boeing CEO acknowledges the similarities between two recent crashes that took the lives of 346 men, women and children and forced the worldwide grounding of the planes. He's promising Boeing will fix the problem. Let's bring in CNN's Tom Foreman. Tom, you've been working closely following this story. Tell us more. Uh, tonight, what is happening is that Boeing is admitting its automated software called MCAS not only played a role in the Ethiopian crash recently, but also the Lion Air crash off Indonesia last fall, which took hundreds of lives. And what seems to have pushed the CEO of Boeing, Dennis Mullenberger, over the edge is a preliminary report with very dire details that was first obtained by CNN. Tonight, a rare and stark admission of fault from the world's biggest airplane maker. We at Boeing are sorry for the lives lost in the recent 737 MAX accidents. It's apparent that in both flights, the Maneuvering Characteristics Augmentation System, known as MCAS, activated in response to erroneous angle of attack information. It's our responsibility to eliminate this risk. We own it and we know how to do it. The video statement from Boeing CEO came late today after a preliminary report laid out in horrific detail what apparently happened to the doomed Ethiopian Airlines plane. The report says the trouble starts right after takeoff with airspeed and altitude readings from the left side of the 737 MAX 8 that don't match the readings from the right side and two sensors on the front disagreeing about the angle of the aircraft's nose. The sensor on the right shows steady readings around 15 degrees, but the one on the left swings wildly from 11 to nearly 75 degrees steep as if the plane is rocketing upward. Those readings are false, but they appear to trigger the MCAS system, an onboard computer which starts pulling the nose down. If the plane were climbing steeply, that would prevent a stall. But because it is climbing normally, the system erroneously starts pushing it toward the ground. The report does not name MCAS, but Boeing has now acknowledged it was involved. The captain asks the first officer to pitch up together to pull back on their controls simultaneously. It does not work. Instead, the flight data recorder shows the plane diving in all four times without pilot's input. An impact warning sounds in the cockpit. Don't sink, don't sink. The crew performed all the procedures repeatedly provided by the manufacturer, but was not able to control the aircraft. The report says the cockpit crew even figures out what is wrong and disables the MCAS system. Then the captain asks his first officer about a key part of the plane needed to regain control, the trim. The reply, it is not working. Less than six minutes in, once again, the aircraft began pitching nose down, eventually reaching 40 degrees. And it slams into the ground with 157 people on board at nearly 600 miles an hour. It is all eerily similar to the crash of an identical jet near Indonesia last fall, killing 189 people. And even though this is just a preliminary report which does not find a probable cause, Boeing is promising a software update for MCAS, some additional safety measures, and trying to regain public confidence. This update, along with the associated training and additional educational materials that pilots want in the wake of these accidents, will eliminate the possibility of unintended MCAS activation and prevent an MCAS-related accident from ever happening again. Still, just a couple of years ago, Boeing was talking about how it appreciated the new streamlined approach to regulations, which specifically was credited in development of the 737 MAX line. And now multiple investigations are looking into how those plates were designed, tested, certified, and frankly, whether they can ever be trusted again. Well, what a disturbing story that is. We're going to have much more on this story coming up later in the Situation Room. Tom Foreman, thanks for that report. Uh,